I know that I said that Donkey Kong Country would be next, and I will get to it next time. But right now, I'm bringing along another new editor, and I thought that this episode would be a much better first episode to review. It's a much shorter one, and it should be an easier review to edit. That being said, I think that a Ren and Stimpy ripoff is the perfect thing to add to this 90s marathon. I talked a bit about this trend in my last animated atrocity review. I stand by the fact that Ren and Stimpy is one of the most influential shows of the 90s. I mean, why wouldn't it be? It was loved by both kids and adults, because there was a lot of talent behind it, and it was smarter than a lot of people gave it credit for. Yes, I am talking about the show where they frequently showed boogers and other bodily oozes. Everyone wanted a piece of that gross out pie. This is probably one of the biggest double-edged swords in cartoon history. You see, a network would would have a hard time justifying allowing something as gross as cow and chicken and not allowing something as dark as the themes encourage the cowardly dog or the Powerpuff Girls. Ren and Stimpy probably single-handedly loosened a lot of restrictions. However, there was one network that wanted to have their cake and eat it too. Disney. <laughs> Disney wanted to have a nice good slice of that gross out pie, without giving up any of the squeaky clean family friendliness of their cartoons, and actually making a gross out cartoon. In fact, that trend is still around today. The blandest cartoons from the Disney Channel or Toon Disney seem to be wannabe gross out shows that have had their wings clipped off, so to speak. They're shows like Brandy and Mr. Whiskers, or Pickle and Peanut. They want to be gross, but because they're on the Disney Channel, they're not allowed to be that. I may get to Brandy and Mr. Whiskers or some of the other wannabe gross out Disney shows, but today we've got to talk about the blandest of them all, Schnookums and Meat. <laughs> People say that I throw around the rip-off complaint a lot, and I kinda do. But I mean no exaggeration when I say that Schnookums and Meat is a direct rip-off of Ren and Stimpy. All of these words are in quotations, but Schnookums and Meat is a slapstick-heavy, gross-out cartoon starring a cat and dog. One of the characters has a personality of an idiot, and one of them is an asshole. It has simplistic backgrounds, and it tends to use stock sound effects. The only difference is that in this show, the dog is the idiot. Because we don't have enough stupid dogs in animation. I mean, Courage gets called a stupid dog, Dog from Cat Dog is stupid, Dino from the Flintstones is stupid, Run from Animaniacs is stupid, Dudley from Tough Puppy is stupid, My Little Pony has the Diamond Dogs and they're stupid, They made Odie a cartoon and he's stupid, There's even a show called Two Stupid Dogs. Maybe that's why no one remembers that show. Two Stupid Dogs. What do you mean, Two Stupid Dogs? All dogs in cartoons are stupid! This has been a public service announcement. Please stop this anti-canine propaganda in animation. This travesty cannot continue. In the meantime, I've got to deal with with this other travesty. We're gonna be looking at the episode Pain in the Brain. That is definitely a good descriptor of it. I will give it credit on that front. This episode is a pain in something, that's for sure. We start at the Schnookums and Meat House, and it immediately starts crashing. And we can see the main problem already. Notice how the house keeps making the exact same movements over and over again. Like, they're actually repeating the same animation over and over again. In Ren and Stimpy, or any cartoon that knew what it was doing, the house would be jumping around, changing shape. It would propel off the ground. The medium of animation is perfect for exaggeration, and that element is absolutely essential to this kind of show. This type of animation is okay if you want to do something more story-based, but this show doesn't want to do that. As we shall see, this show is going to continue to be as restrained as possible. We immediately see Schnookums and Meat running around the house, engaged in some kind of game. It doesn't really have any context. These kind of shows don't have much of a story because they don't need that much story, but the bare bones is still important. And it's important to establish your premise. It's never explained which Dickums and Meat are doing right now, and that gets to be distracting, but to give them credit, let's see what kind of slapstick jokes that they chose to tell. We see our first instance of real slapstick here, about 45 seconds in. It's not the worst slapstick I've ever seen, but notice how it barely makes an impact and it barely even affects meat. Making an impact and affecting a character are both imperative to making slapstick work in a cartoon. You need to emphasize the pain. Just playing a sound effect doesn't work. Then the two of them start running around the room with no one getting hit by anything, which is honestly just burning time. Objects breaking is not slapstick. Come on guys, Ren and Stimpy would have told 
told at least five jokes by now, whether or not they landed. You've told a total of one. Schnookums starts knocking down furniture in a hallway. While it does make an impact and sound effects and all that, these things aren't alive, so there is no slapstick. On the story side of things, there's no tension or interest. For example, in Tom and Jerry, if Jerry was destroying the house like this, the episode would have started with the owners of the house telling Tom that there would be hell to pay if the house is a mess. Give me a reason to care about what's going on. One moment in particular I want to show you is this one here. Look at Meat's expression as the piano is about to fall on him. He shakes up and down, sure, but his expression ultimately doesn't change. On top of that, it is incredibly controlled. One of the biggest and most famous rules of Ren and Stimpy is that the artists couldn't draw the same expression twice. There were a thousand ways to show the expression of, say, happiness. Consistently being on model like Meat is here absolutely kills John Kay's style of humor. This is why the Ripping Friends was such a disaster. I mean, if you're gonna steal a guy's jokes, you should at least have the decency to tell them correctly. As the piano falls, there is so much potential for wacky expressions and exaggerated body language. They've got the basic idea of fear down, but these characters look like an important vase is about to smash against the ground. Not that a piano is about to smash into their face. And when the piano does actually fall on them, instead of seeing any impact, we're given a cloud of dust, and any potential humor is obscured. I get it, it's Disney, and Disney doesn't do controversial. They don't want to go into the violence, which is why they showed a dead Mufasa a couple of years back. And they'd show an insane man literally attempt to commit genocide one year after this. And they'd have Darkwing Duck with an intro that has more slapstick than this show's entire existence. But fair is fair. Disney, if you don't want to make a gross out slapstick cartoon, that's fine. Don't steal the concept for a gross out slapstick cartoon. Cow and Chicken is definitely <laughs> directly inspired by Ren and Stimpy, but it actually at least wants to be Ren and Stimpy. Schnookums and Meat is afraid to be what it wants to be. Yeah, it felt like a piano landed on me. I can't believe I'm saying this here of all places, but show, don't tell. Even if there's not much story, it's still an important concept. Just saying that hurt doesn't magically make it funny. Then things get really stupid. Schnookums and Meat both lose their brains, literally. However, they don't immediately die, and they continue to have the same mental functions throughout most of the episode, with no signs of degradation. It's almost like losing their brains had no negative effects on their life whatsoever. Once again, there is no tension to this conflict whatsoever. Ever. Ooh, what we gonna do, Stuckum? What we gonna do? We don't have any brains. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but this is another example of you should have let their characters go off model. It's a consistent problem with this show. You should have let the characters be more exaggerated. You should have let them showcase their pain more. But you didn't. It's fine if a particular frame or something doesn't look good as a still image. As long as it all looks good as one continuous piece. Trust me, so many in-betweens look flatly bizarre if you just look at them plainly. The characters follow a trail of brain sludge down to the basement and see that they've landed under a workbench, where it looks like they've been sitting there for years, not that they just rolled down there a second ago. Now here's where Ren and Stimpy would get really gross. But remember, you're not watching Ren and Stimpy, you're watching the Disney Channel. Schnookum tries to hit the brains with a broom handle, but nothing happens. Like, it's more or less dead air. There's a lot of nothing that happens in this episode. When a spider pops up, meat beats it with a stick, and it's another joke that fails to connect. What should have happened? happens? Well, only Schnookum should have lost his brain and this could have been a plot where the smart character becomes stupid. Or they could have put in the wrong brains. There's plenty of material with either of those scenarios. Much more than what they go with, at least. But let's work with what they got. Hitting the brain should have affected the character who owns said brain. Yes, it's a bit illogical and a bit surreal, but then again, Ren and Stimpy was a bit illogical and a bit surreal. And until the end, the brains aren't sentient. It has the same effect as knocking over the furniture from before. It's not real slapstick. There would be some tension if these brains were important, but right after this, Snookum still has his ideas like always. He mixes up a bunch of cleaning solutions, and it burns through one of the brains. Once again, the brain is not currently alive and can't feel pain, so any slapstick done to him doesn't really have an impact on the audience. You know, it's like squeezing a stress ball. Or like squeezing one of those foam brains that you'd get in an anatomy set. Then they use the washing machine in a segment that goes on too long. It ends up with their brains shrinking in the wash. Despite not having a brain, Schnookums gets the idea to get them wet to return them to normal. 
Tell me again why these brains were so important. If they did anything, it seems like their function was at the very least redundant. Even if you're not focusing on the story, something like a character losing a body part should have a noticeable effect on how they act. How do you know that this one is mine? I don't know how he knows anything considering that he doesn't have a brain! Schnookums then gets mad at Meat when he slips and fumbles his own brain. And then they get into a fight, hurting each other's brains. And my reaction is consistently, so what? These brains aren't important. The cartoon has made next to no indication that they have any sort of importance whatsoever. They do nothing for either of these characters, except stop them from panicking that they're losing a brain. They can live entirely normal lives, full of ideas without their brains, it seems. Even to take the show on its own terms, that hitting a useless object should be funny. It does that wrong too. No environmental factors stick whatsoever. The brains show no wear and hair no matter what happens. Meat literally shoots a brain and it explodes, and it comes back from being exploded the very next time that it's seen. I mean, most cartoon characters are at least a little bit woozy when something like that happens. Schnookums smashes a brain into putty, and in the very next scene, it's back into its own solid shape. What happens to the brains are pointless, and the episode constantly communicates that. Then the brains magically come alive, completely unharmed. They're just a little bit annoyed that they've been used as every variety of sport balls, crushed, maimed, shot, and run over with a steamroller. You know, like you get. Then the brains decided to go to Vegas. I'm trying to think, but, but, I, I can't! Weird, you were able to do that before, even though you didn't have a brain in your head then either. Then we get a montage of the brains in Vegas, and Schnookums and me doing absolutely nothing but staring at the sky because that's funny. Then the brains feel sorry and decide to come home. Too bad we lost our shirts, though. Yeah, but it's our own fault, man. Gambling's the work of the devil. So is theft. This hypocritical moralizing message brought to you by the Walt Disney Corporation. Predictably, the brains enter the wrong bodies, something that would have made a much better, or at least more interesting episode than what we actually got. Wait a minute, let me try to parse this. The characters that didn't have any brains came up with new ideas to try and solve their problems. Meanwhile, the actual, literal brains did something stupid and walked into the wrong bodies of their own accord. I've got nothing. Good night, everybody. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs>